Welcome to Reincarnation. I had a request to show the reincarnation process, so I thought I'd do a video since I'm about to reincarnate Voodoo, so pretty good timing. This video is going to be for people who are totally new to reincarnating. If you've been playing the game for a while and you've already reincarnated and you know what it's all about, this video is going to contain nothing for you. I know that the reincarnation process can be intimidating to newer players. I remember building up the confidence to TR the first time, you know, I felt, and this was back when the level cap was 20, I was like, oh, I worked so hard to get the level cap of 20, and now I'm going to lose all that. And so if, it's, if, it, if it means anything to you, uh, I think TRing is a lot of fun. I think working through that life again, you know, with a, with a tune that I love is, is tons of fun, and your, your tune becomes more powerful because you benefit from these past lives. You know, I'm not going to go over what all the past lives are and, and, uh, and stuff. But I'll just be speaking in general about some of these things. And I'm also going to just mention along the way some of my plans with Voodoo. I just finished up three uh, Deep Gnome past lives. And I was thinking about doing three Shared Archive, you know, for the dodge. Uh, but I can't even remember if I can benefit from more dodge. And I think we got Dragonborn coming up. So I think I want, and we got Reaper mode now. And I, I think I want to go back to Capped Druid, and, or Capped... Um, Warlock and, and have some fun with that for a while and then I can always go back and do more past lives if I choose to. So if you're reincarnating, um, if you're an iconic you have to be level 30. And there are different versions of reincarnation which can be confusing when you're new to it. There's like heroic true reincarnating, there's epic reincarnating, there's lesser reincarnating, there's iconic reincarnating, and what the hell does all that mean? Well I'll try to make a little sense of it but there's a really good graphic on DDO Wiki that I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a link to that graphic in the video description so that can really help like if you're more of a visual person that can really help make sense of things and so heroic true reincarnation is something that a regular race will have an option so an iconic tune doesn't have the option to do a heroic true reincarnation and just sort of a, a regular race that, that started at level 1 once they reach level 20 and any time after that they can have the option to heroic true reincarnate and that's going to take them back to level 1 and you, you start over and you basically pick pick everything again you know you, you retain your name and you retain your sex but I want I think that you know every basically everything else you can change new class new alignment you start over at level one and you have more build points if it's the first time you reincarnated the first couple times you reincarnate you actually get more build points which is awesome and then you get that like if you do the heroic true reincarnation you get a heroic past life and those show up in your feats uh, right here under past lives you see there's a different entry for epic past lives heroic past lives iconic past lives those are three categories of past lives so I'm also beginning a bard past life right now. But you can hover over it and you can see in each of these past lives you can benefit from th three stacks of it. No more than that. So you can see like I have three barbarian past lives. If I were to do another barbarian life in true reincarnate, I wouldn't I couldn't get a fourth stack of barbarian past life or any past life. This would be my first bard past life. In all these past lives, uh, the heroic ones, they have a, an active and a passive component to them. You get the passive component. So Barbarian, for example, uh, it says each time you require this feat, you get 10 additional hit points. And then there's also like an active Barbarian past life feat that once you have the Barbarian past life, that you can, you can choose that. You can spend a feat on the active one, and uh, that has benefits too. And the, on the heroic side... Those ones that you have to actually have to spend a feed on, most of them are not worth it. But one of the more popular ones is the Wizard Past Life feat, Arcane Initiate. And this is popular among casters because um, is that right? Yeah. What well, gives you? I'm I'm not seeing it here. Maybe it's somewhere else in the list. But anyways, the Wizard. <laughs> The active wizard past life feat gives you plus one DC to all your spells, which is pretty awesome if you're a DC caster. So it's a pretty popular one to pick. But a lot of the other active heroic past lives are not really worth spending a feat to get. But like I said, you get the benefit of the passive component 
automatically. And then with Epic, Epic Pass Lives, they all have an active and passive component as well. And you actually, with the Epic Pass Lives, one of the things that's different is you get access to the passive and the, the active component, period. You don't have to spend a feed on it like you do with the heroic active component. Are you confused already? It can be confusing when you're new to it. I know. I understand that. With the epic pass lives, so they all have a hero or have a, an active and a passive component. So, for example, this block energy here, the passive bonus, if you can read that, says plus three physical resistance per stack of this past life, and you can stack it up to three times. You can see I have it stacked three times. The active component. With the epic pass lives, you have to activate a stance. And so you would like drag it down in your hotbar, and then you would turn it on to activate that. And the active component of, of this block energy one says while blocking, you get 10% damage absorption against cold, electric, acid, and fire damage per stack, and again, up to three times. But you can only have one epic pass life stance active from each sphere. So f you can only have one epic pass life active from the divine sphere, one from the martial, and one from the primal, and one from the arcane. So that means you can have four epic pass life stances active at one time. And you can switch between them on the fly, right in a quest too, which is pretty cool. Like that block energy one is a really nice situational one. For me, I like to tank a lot, and if I'm tanking a raid boss that does a lot of elemental damage, I can just pop that on. But you do benefit from all of the passive components of your epic pass lives, always. It's just only one active stance per sphere. And the iconic pass lives are very similar in that they have an active and a passive component. You can benefit from them three times, three stacks. And you can be in one iconic past life stance. So you can see I have two deep gnome past lives. I'm about to get my third. I have three morning lord past lives and three PDK. The PDK is actually not a stance, it's actually a clicky, but the others are stances. And I can have one of these stances active. And so with the deep gnome past life, the passive bonus is plus three magical resistance per stack of this past life. You can stack up to three times. So I get that. So I have plus six from that. No matter what stance I'm in, I'm getting that plus six right now MRR. And after I reincarnate here, I'll have plus nine. And I'll get that no matter what stance I'm in, no matter what iconic stance I'm in. But the active component of the Deep Gnome past life, if I, that's the stance I choose to activate, it says it gives me plus one illusion DC to my spells and five acid spell power per stack of the past life. So I can get plus 3 to illusion DC, and plus 15 to acid spell power. If I had 3 stacks, pretty awesome. You know, If you're like a, a PK caster, that would be an awesome stance to run in. But only one iconic past life stance can be active at a time, and you can switch on the fly just like your epic past life stance, stances. So when you're ready to reincarnate, you're going to come into the Reincarnation Grove, which I'm in right now, and that's accessible through the Hall of Heroes. And There's one in the Evening Star Hall of Heroes, and there's one in the, in the Eberron Hall of Heroes. And you're going to talk to the Life Shaper here. Now, I already said that to Heroic to Reincarnate, you need to be a, uh, a regular race, a non-iconic race. And any time, once you reach level 20, you'll have that option. To Epic Reincarnate, you have to be level 30. And in order to benefit from an epic past life, in order to get an epic past life, your karma in a sphere has to be maxed out at 6 million. That's maximum karma. And the way that you earn karma is just by earning XP in that sphere. And so, and it doesn't matter which destiny you're in. So, for example, in the divine sphere here, I could be l sort of leveling, earning XP in any one of these destinies and for every one point of XP I get, I get an equivalent point of karma. And the karma is only used for purposes of determining your eligibility to get an epic past life from that sphere. So for example, I could, when I'm, when I'm, if I was going to epic reincarnate right now, which again you have to be level 30 to do, and you have to have 6 million karma, I couldn't pull an epic past life from the martial sphere because I don't have any karma there. 
but I could from these other spheres. I have six million karma there. I actually have all the past life stances for the martial sphere, so that's why I'm not even trying to get any more karma there. And when you epic reincarnate, it will reset your karma to zero, so you have to re-earn it again by getting experience by running in those destinies. And when you epic reincarnate, it takes you from 30, from level 30, back down to level 20. And you get that whatever epic past life you chose. And then you have to, you actually, when you do that, you go through an LR, a lesser reincarnation process where you have to rebuild your tune from level 1 to 20. You have to re-level it from 1 to 20. It's, you, you get all that experience, that level 20 experience, but you have to go through the process of just rebuilding your character, which actually can be really helpful, like if you wanted to change around the way your skill points were, and you can change your feat selection and stuff. So um, that's nice. Some people find it to be, you know, especially if you're just doing the exact same build, to do that epic reincarnation, go through that whole LR process can be kind of a pain, you know, because it, it takes some time to pick all those feats and set all, you know, go through all the leveling process. But at the end of the epic reincarnation process, you're back at level 20, and you have an epic past life. And you can epic reincarnate no matter what kind of tune you are. You can do it as an iconic, or you can do it as a heroic takes you back to 20. You can go to 30 again, you can do an epic rank, and you could just stay in epic levels and keep going back from 30 to 20, 30 to 20, and get a b whole bunch of epic past lives. And epic past lives, generally speaking, I think are more powerful than heroics, although there are some heroic past lives that are really awesome, too. I'm not throwing those under the bus. I'm, I'm just saying that epics are really, really awesome. Now, and then there's this thing called iconic reincarnation, and this is where it can get, be really confusing to new players. So, iconic reincarnation means you are already an iconic. It's, in a sense, it's the true reincarnation option for an iconic tune. An iconic tune starts at level 15, and you can't heroic true reincarnate at 20 like you can with regular races, I mean, it wouldn't really be fair for you to just go from level 15 to 20 and then be able to true reincarnate and iconic. You know, you only went five levels. Come on now. So they made it so you got to go to 30 if you're an iconic and you want to reincarnate. Now, as an iconic, you you could choose to epic reincarnate when you're at 30, which would take you back to 20. But remember, you don't have a true reincarnation option as an iconic. You have to iconic reincarnate if you want to get like the heroic pass life. And to iconic reincarnate, which again is the is, is basically the true reincarnation option for an iconic tune, you have to be level 30. And when you iconic reincarnate, like I'm going to do with this tune, it's a deep gnome, that's an iconic race, it's going to take me all the way back to level 1. And I'm going to get an iconic past life, in this case deep gnome, and I'm going to get a heroic past life, in this case bard. But I'm not going to get an epic past life. Epic past lives come from epic reincarnating, which take you from 30 to 20. An important point here is that if you're a regular race, if you're not an iconic, and you are at 30, what you want, and you, and you want to sort of start all over with a new class, you would never want to true reincarnate when you're at level 30. What you'd want to do is first epic reincarnate and go back to 20 so that you can get the epic past life. And then true reincarnate back to 1. If you were at level 30 and you just did a true reincarnation you went back to 1, you would lose out on an epic past life. So for regular races, if you're at 30, you want to first epic reincarnate to 20. And then after you level it back up to 20, just sort of the automatic process that you do right then and there then you can just do a true reincarnation back to one. But as an iconic, you couldn't do that. As an iconic, if you were at 30, you couldn't go to 20 and then go back to one. As an iconic, you have to go to 30 and then go all the way back to one. You could go back to 20 and then re-level it back up to 30. So as an iconic, you're getting the iconic past life and the heroic past life. When you epic reincarnating, you're just getting epic past life. And when you true reincarnate, you just get a heroic past life.
hopefully you're not too confused. And like I said, there's going to be a link in the video description that has sort of a graphic of all this, which is really good. So if you're visual, take a look at that. So when you're ready to reincarnate, you need to have a heart of wood. Whatever kind of heart of wood that is appropriate for your, you know, you need to have a true heroic heart of wood. If, if you're heroic reincarnating, you need to have an epic heart of wood. If you're epic reincarnating, and you need to have a um, iconic heart of wood if you're iconic reincarnating. And you can get those from the DDO store. You can also purchase them in game. Uh, hero, true, uh, heroic true hearts of wood you can get for 20 tokens from Lahar, the epic trader in the 12 the magma elemental guy and then your iconic and your epic hearts of wood you can get uh, using heart seeds or commendations of heroism my inventory is full because I, I had you have to empty your TR cache so if you if you if you're a multi-lifer you get this thing called the TR cache where all of your gear gets dumped into it and it's sort of like a special separate bank that, and it's, it's a withdrawal only once you pull something out of it it stays out you can't put stuff back in but when you when you true reincarnate or you iconic reincarnate everything gets dumped into that but you have to empty that out before you can before you can uh, iconic or heroic reincarnate you don't have to empty it if you're epic reincarnating let me make a space here. What can I throw out? I'm going to throw out my stack of neutralized poison potions. Great. And it's just filled it up with something else. Okay. So I'll show you how this works. Find my commendations. Accommodations of Valor. Oops, where'd they go? Oh, here they are. So you just click on them, or you click on your, your heart seeds. And it <laughs> brings up this barter box here, and you just click on that, and it shows you. You can buy uh, quite a few different things here. Potions of Spell Power, Potion of Prowess, Potion of Insightful Ability, and then you can see you can get Iconic True Heart of Wood or Epic Heart of Wood for 4,200 Commendations of Valor. And once you're level capped to 30, you'll have the option from your quest end rewards to take two heart seeds when you're capped. Those will be in the end rewards. So you can build up heart seeds really quick, and a heart seed basically counts as 100 Commendations of Valor, and you can trade Commendations of Valor for heart seeds. But you can buy Iconic True Hearts of Wood or Epic Hearts of Wood for 42 heart seeds or 4,200 Commendations of Valor. It's the same price. It's just, it's, it's almost like gold pieces versus platinum pieces. So, you can get them in-game. You cannot buy lesser hearts of wood in-game. Those are only available through the DDO store. You could also find them in chests. They're extremely rare drops. Um, sometimes you get them on daily rolls. So, because sometimes people will get them in chests, you might occasionally see them on the auction houses or the shard exchange, you know, but they were going to be really expensive, typically, unless somebody just had no clue what they had. But you can look there. And if you have been playing DDO for a long time and you're coming after, back after a long break, I'm also just going to say that there is no such thing anymore as greater reincarnation. There used to be this thing called greater reincarnation. That's been long gone. But there are a variety of lesser reincarnations. And uh, like you might see like a lesser heart plus one up to plus five. And then there's also a plus 20. There's nothing between plus five and plus 20. But those for every plus, you can change out one of your classes. And there are very specific details about rules regarding changing classes. So I'm not going to try to go over that. Uh, I'm not even the best person to explain it. But if you're going to lesser reincarnate and you're going to swap out some classes, I would highly recommend that you go to DDO Wiki and read the full article about lesser reincarnating and changing classes. Because they're very specific rules and you can screw things up. You know, and you can end up into a, in a situation where like you, you can't swap out the classes that you wanted to because you didn't do things sort of in the right order. You're probably feeling even confused more if you're new to this and you're like, screw it, I don't want to ever reincarnate. But trust me, it's fun. <laughs> and these past lives do make you a lot more powerful, especially when they really start piling up. It can make a really big difference. So you're going to go to the Life Shaper, and then you're going to choose whatever reincarnation you want. 
and see, you know, heroic, lesser, iconic, epic. So I, I was choosing iconic again because I'm an iconic, you know, I'm a deep gnome. And you go to the next screen and it tells you what, what's involved. And you drag your heart down here. So in my case, I dragged an iconic heart of wood down here. And I've already done this. So I'm already what they call flagged for reincarnation. I was almost going to reincarnate. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to do a video of this. So I don't need to drag a heart here. I'm just showing you uh, what you need to do. So you drag the heart down there. And then you come over here. And this next screen will tell you what the requirements are. And they'll be sort of pinked out here if you aren't meeting some of the requirements. In this case, it says heart of wood required. I didn't drop a heart of wood over there. You know, and that's why that's pink. But it also says character must be level 30. Like I said earlier, if you're iconic, you got to be level 30. And here it tells you what you're going to get. You're going to get a new life. And I'm going to have the option to start at level 1 if I want, or I could start at level 15 as an iconic if I want. So here's where some of the confusion comes from. That iconic reincarnation, like I said, that's the option to basically true reincarnate if you're already an iconic. It doesn't mean you go into an iconic. You can if you want. But when you iconic re true reincarnate, you, you start as whatever you want. You start as a regular race, you can start as an iconic. And you, just like when you, true, when you heroic true reincarnate, you can start as a, an iconic or as a, as a heroic if you have access to iconics. Some iconics are pay. Pay to play. And also tells me I'm going to get plus two build points. Now I'm not going to get because you get maximum of 36 point build. So after you've, you know, iconic or true or true reincarnated twice, you get up to a 36 point build. That's as far as you go. So I'm not actually getting two build points. I'm going to get the bard heroic past life, and I'm going to get the the deep gnome iconic past life. But I'm going to click back just to show you like, oh, I'm going to click on heroic true reincarnation and. Uh, I'm going to click over again and it says right here character can't be iconic that's not an option for iconic you're, you're, you're basically your iconic reincarnation is your heroic reincarnation option your true reincarnation option for an iconic class and it also shows that I would need a heart of wood so this is never going to be an option for an iconic for somebody who's already an iconic or you can epic reincarnate you pop your epic heart down there and you select when you epic reincarnate notice that there's there's a pull down menu that wasn't there for the other options epic reincarnate you're selecting an epic destiny sphere that you want a past life from so I could do this right now if I wanted to uh, and this would take me back to 20 and then you'd select like whatever sphere these are the these are the options that I, I could have I could take energy criticals as an epic past life or you could take Arcane Alacrity. There's a third one, but I already have three stacks of those, so that's not an option. The um, Enchant Weapon, I already have that three times. Or if I were to go to Divine, the only one I have left to choose from is Power Over Light and Death. So I'm going to go back. Oop. Actually, let's go ahead and pick that and go over one more. And just to show you the requirements, character has to be level 30 to Epic Reincarnate. I didn't pop in my heart of wood, so that's why that's pinked out. It says you must spend six million karma in the divine sphere, and I showed you I had that. Okay, but I'm gonna go back. Oops, and pick the martial sphere just to show you. I already have earned three copies of every past life in the martial sphere, so there's nothing available. But just for sake of showing you, the karma from the destiny is also pinked out. I don't have the option of taking a past life and reincarnating from the martial sphere. Go back to divine, pick that, go over. So it shows you the requirement and the, re the rewards. I get a character respec. It's going to let me level back up to 20. You become level 20, and I get this epic past life. I get access to that. see re lesser reincarnation similarly you want to pop the lesser heart down there you'd want to read through all this showing you that I didn't pop in the lesser heart you get the character respect respect and if you were a 28 point build it would upgrade it to a 32 point build when you lesser reincarnate so the lesser reincarnation option is is really about if you just want to respect your tune and if you had like an LR 20 
are you could change all 20 classes into something different but I'm going to iconic true reincarnate I've already done my heart I told you I'm already flagged for it but when you do it and you click over for the last time it's gonna ask for confirmation because it does the game doesn't want you to do it by accident you just have to type your character's name in a box and once you do that you will be flagged for reincarnation and you can still log into your tune like I've already done that and I logged back into my tune and I'm still level 30 uh, you could you still you can flag yourself for reincarnation you can still play it as normal but I'm gonna go ahead and and log out and you can see I have this reincarnation button now it's telling me that I'm flagged for reincarnation. Now I can just, like I said, I can just click on Voodoo and enter and play it as her level 30. But I'm ready to reincarnate. So I'm going to click reincarnate and it's asking for confirmation again. So I'm going to type in Voodoo. Say goodbye to Voodoo the Deep Gnome. You're never going to see that again. <laughs> and, you know, earlier I think I said, you know, I was thinking about doing 3 Shard Archive, but I really want to go back to Cap. Uh, Warlock right now and just do my regular build for a while and then if I want to go back and do Shard Kai later I can do that whenever the hell I want to I'm gonna choose so I, I'm gonna show this on the video too just because if you're totally new just so that you can see what's involved I can pick anything I want I can pick an iconic if I want I can pick a regular if I want I'm gonna pick a spellcaster I'm gonna pick a warlock you can't change your sex. It looks like it's allowing me, actually, but I don't think you can. I may be wrong. That's interesting. I want to look that up. <laughs> I'm going to go drow, uh, which is voodoo's normal thing. And now I get to rebuild my character. I want max con, because voodoo's a tank. And I'm not going to go max charisma because if I just back off a couple points of charisma, you can see these, these but you know this because you already built the tune, right? These last couple points are more expensive, not just one point. So just by backing off a couple points of charisma, it's going to be six points to deal with. And I know from previously reincarnating that I want a 15 intelligence. That's going to give me all of the skill points that I want. Intelligence affects the number of skill points that you get. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do 15 intelligence and I'm gonna do a lot uh, just that extra point in dexterity. Click next. Now I'm gonna spend my skill points. Max out concentration. So those of you specifically interested in Voodoo's build, you get you get a little bit of insight what I'm doing. So I'm talking through it. And for those of you who are just generally interested in reincarnating, you just get to see the process. Actually, I want to pick up that one point and tumble. If you pick up one point and tumble, you can tumble. But if you don't have any, if you don't have at least one point and tumble, then you can't tumble. So I always spend one point and tumble on any of my tunes. You never know when you're going to want to tumble. Okay, that's as far as I can go with with skill points right now. Next. All right, what the hell are Voodoo's feats? I don't even know off the top of my head. I'm going to pull up my build post on my other screen. Because <laughs> I don't want to screw up my own build. Wouldn't that be embarrassing if I screwed up my own build? Shield for efficiency general. Not a very sexy choice. But as an enlightened spirit tank, that's something that I want. I'm going to pop that in the regular feed. Because what if I ever wanted to, you know, swap that out? Um, class feed is not something you can just swap out. I'm going to do fay pack. And the bonus feet too. The bonus feet aren't something you can swap out at like Fred in House J where you swap your feet. So you want to make sure that that bonus feet that you pick is something you're going to want to stick with. Something you're never going to want to swap out. So like if you're a caster for example you could pick Maximize as your bonus feet because as a caster you're going to want to have Maximize. You're never going to want to get rid of Maximize. <laughs> okay what spell? Shield? Yes thank you. Oh, I only get to pick one. 
jump. I love jump. I hate having a low jump. I'm gonna pick that. What the hell? All right, so Jen's just giving you sort of a summary of, of things that you've picked so far. Now we get to build Voodoo. What she looks like. What does Voodoo look like? Voodoo has no hair. I've been running around with bald Voodoo for years. It's sort of her look. But I know there's others that do it too. And I like to get that purplish tint to, to her her hair, the little bit of eyebrow hair that she has. And I actually wrote down all these selections so I don't have to remember it. So I know that Voodoo is 178127. So the hairstyle is 1, the eyebrows are 7 is what I like. I know that the next, the eyes are number 8. I know that the nose is number 1, and I know that the lips are number 2, and I know that the facial detail is number 7. I like that nose piercing on Voodoo. So I actually have this written down, and it can be helpful to write down. I also have it written down that I like to start with a 15 intelligence. Because sometimes, you know, if I haven't reincarnated in months, I get to that point and I'm like, shit, do I start with a 14 or 15 intelligence? I can't remember. So I write this stuff down <laughs> so that I don't screw things up. All right. Eye color. I like to get the bright red eyes. Those are pretty bright. Let's go there. And skin color, I like the purpley, the really purpley skin color. I like that. Right there. And lip color. Let's go with something dark. Okay, alignment. I'm going to pick that neutral. Okay, Voodoo is built. There she is. What does Voodoo look like? A character creation. I've been to this screen with Voodoo so many times. All right, so here I am at the character selection screen. Voodoo is now a level level one baby warlock, and we're gonna enter. And that's it. That's the reincarnation process. This is also a good time to mention how you can save your UI settings, and I've mentioned this in some other videos too. But it's appropriate to mention now that you can actually save your UI settings. So like, you know, to whatever you want. And I'm talking about the placement of all your little bars and stuff. So not actually what's loaded up into each slot, but the actual placement of your hot bars and things. You know, like if I wanted to move things around like this and I want the way that I could save this setting is I'm going to type slash UI space layout space save. Actually there's no space between UI and layout. I think it's just UI layout save and let's call this test. Oops, maybe it is UI space layout. Sometimes I forget these things. Okay, it is UI space layout space save and then whatever you want to name it. So typically you're going to name it your character. So at any time I want to load this configuration, this silly looking configuration I have up now, I'm just going to type slash UI space layout load and then test and that would bring that up if things got moved around but I don't want to load it up I already have it up here so I want to load Voodoo's configuration so I already had that saved from before so slash UI layout load Voodoo and boom that's how Voodoo's layout is and now I, I have to load everything up into those hotbars but that saves me some time you know of clicking and dragging everything and getting it where I want it so it's a nice little time saver, and so I, I recommend that you save your UI layout for every one of your tunes. So now here I am on the beach of Korthos, Voodoo the Noob. And so if you if you are new, you know I'm not even sure of this to be honest with you. But if you definitely like, if you want to be able to go to to the market right away, you know, skip the Corthos storyline. You can still do the Corthos quests, but if you go through the Corthos storyline, and I'm again, I'm not positive of this, but you might be stuck in Corthos until you finish the story. I'm not sure. You still, maybe you can, I don't know for sure. But I would just recommend to skip the Corthos storyline if you indeed want to make sure that you can go 
to the harbor or the market right away to pick up supplies to, to get stuff out of your bank. Yes, I'm going to skip the Corthos storyline. Oh, I guess I'll just take an Ember Rapier. And then it puts me in Corthos Village. And now I start adventuring back as a level 1 warlock. So I guess that's it, and that's all. Again, I'll put that that graphic link in the video description if you're a more visual person or you just want to sort of study that a little bit more because you know all those reincarnation options uh, can be really confusing. And, and and listening to me describe them, you know, maybe I missed something, maybe it didn't make sense, whatever. So if you're new to it, I encourage you to check out that link. Thank you so much for watching. I hope for those of you who are new to reincarnation that this helps you understand things a little bit better and maybe gives you the motivation or the the courage to actually reincarnate trust me like i said it's a lot of fun to to re-level your tune again your tune will be more powerful and you know i have certain tunes that i love like i love voodoo it was my second tune and and i just love lo leveling her and, and playing her through again so thanks for watching if you have any questions about my videos you can respond on youtube and if you have any questions about you know voodoo's build ginger spices build you can respond uh, in my build post in the in the warlock and the druid forms and if you're on Sarlona you are welcome to send me a tell